At the Zodiac headquarters, Gemini expresses hesitance about the risks involved, while Zodiac emphasizes the importance of sacrifice for the future. Despite Gemini's concerns, Zodiac requests his horoscope, which turns out to be for Scorpio, advising bold risks for potential rewards. Gemini says taking chances might bring good things, but if he waits too long, Shield will win. Scorpio then orders Ares and Taurus to mobilize the troops, choosing less skilled people instead of the most talented ones, focusing on getting things done, rather than worrying about taking risks. In New York City, J. Jonah introduces Peter Parker, proudly comparing himself to a father figure to Peter. However, Peter interrupts Jonah's criticism of Spider-Man, to announce the opening of Parker Industries' New York City offices, unveiling the newly renovated Baxter Building. At a bar, Johnny Storm witnesses Peter Parker's casual remark, about the Baxter building needing renovation, and transforms into the human torch in outrage. He confronts Peter at the building's site, only to find himself trapped in a plexiglass cage. Peter, now in his Spider-Man costume, mocks Johnny's situation, but as Johnny's anger intensifies, he pleads for a chance to explain. Ignoring Johnny's plea, Spider-Man punches him through a wall, to prevent him from revealing Peter's secret identity. Witnessing the chaos, Clayton Cole considers intervening as Clash but hesitates. Johnny accuses Spider-Man of disrespecting the memory of the Fantastic Four and their legacy, by purchasing the Baxter Building. Amidst their heated exchange, Spider-Man receives a low-priority call from S.H.I.E.L.D., which he dismisses, choosing to continue the fight with Johnny. On the S.H.I.E.L.D. helicarrier over the East China Sea, Mockingbird informs Nick Fury that Spider-Man isn't responding to their calls, despite the urgent need for his assistance. Fury instructs her to keep trying, emphasizing the importance of having their best operatives, for the upcoming strike against the Zodiac. However, the Zodiac launches a surprise attack on the helicarrier, causing it to crash into the ocean. As the Zodiac forces infiltrate the helicarrier, Mockingbird reveals to Nick that Scorpio is his uncle. Unfazed by this revelation amidst the chaos, Nick prioritizes the immediate threat, declaring that the family reunion can wait. At Parker Industries, Spider-Man surrenders to Johnny Storm, highlighting the significant damages caused to his property. He appeals to their old friendship, asking Johnny to talk things out. Agreeing to give it a chance, Johnny is taken on a tour of the facility by Spider-Man. Upon entering the head office, they encounter Harry Osborn, who now operates under his mother's maiden name, Lyman, due to his father's infamous reputation as the Green Goblin. Harry reveals that he's in charge of the New York office, when Peter is away and emphasizes their close friendship. To prevent Johnny from revealing his identity to Harry, Spider-Man quickly guides him away, showing him various parts of the building, including Johnny's old room, now a washroom. When Johnny discovers the new Spider-Mobile, he becomes furious that Peter built it without him, leading to a confrontation that threatens to intensify. Concerned about the potential damage to the building, Clayton prepares to intervene with his sonic bracers. On the shield helicarrier, Scorpio breaches the holding area and releases Leo, who assures him of his loyalty. However, Scorpio clarifies that their attack wasn't a rescue mission. Confused, Leo is swiftly eliminated by Scorpio using the Zodiac key. With Leo's failure, Scorpio orders the Zodiac troops to retreat into the ocean, where Pisces ships await their escape. At Parker Industries, Clayton disobeys Spider-Man's orders, and attacks the Human Torch with his sonic gauntlets. Annoyed by Clayton's actions, Spider-Man reveals himself as Peter Parker, and scolds Clayton for using his Clash tech without permission. Clayton pleads for forgiveness, and Peter assures him they will discuss the matter later. The confrontation ends as Johnny Storm also stands down. Peter leads Johnny to the main lobby, where a statue honoring the Fantastic Four stands. Peter explains, that he hired Alicia Masters, to create the statue for the Baxter Building's lasting connection to the Fantastic Four, expressing his intention to return ownership of the building to them in the future. Touched by the act, Johnny appreciates that the building remains within the family. Later, Peter, Johnny, and Harry gather at a bar, where Johnny expresses disbelief at Peter's decision, to hire Clash and the son of the Green Goblin. Harry reveals his own past as the Green Goblin, but Peter emphasizes his belief in second chances, adding that they won't take legal action against Johnny for the damages caused. As Harry leaves to get drinks, Johnny quietly expresses surprise, that he doesn't know Peter's secret identity as Spider-Man. Peter reveals, that only 26 people in Earth-616 are aware of his dual identity, including Mockingbird, who is also in on the secret. Mockingbird contacts Peter to inform him of Zodiac's attack, and the potential decryption of stolen data, prompting S.H.I.E.L.D. to prepare for a global strike. Peter invites Johnny to join them, and as Harry returns with drinks, he presents the invitation as if it were for a casual bowling game. Johnny jokes about not drinking before the big match, but Harry reveals they are avoiding alcohol, due to his recovery from addiction and his responsibilities as a single father. Harry expresses gratitude for Peter's consistent support, and sees him as more than an Osborne, but as a true friend. Johnny corrects him, 
stating that Harry is family to Peter. The three friends cheers to their friendship, emphasizing the importance of family in their lives. In the African nation of Najwa, the general of a military dictatorship acknowledges the peace and prosperity, maintained through his control of power. However, he expresses concern over Parker Industries, intention to provide free power to the people, realizing he couldn't fight back, because Parker Industries had better technology. Turning to a mysterious figure with bandaged head, and a distinctive ring, he asks if his weapons are capable of matching those of Parker Industries, receiving a positive response. The general addresses the figure as Mr. Osborne, signaling a questionable alliance form to counter the threat, posed by Parker Industries. 